Yeah, so if we look at edge computing for manufacturing, I think we need to look a little bit into the past of the manufacturing vertical, right? Looking back, um, manufacturing has been, I would say, a stable environment, you know, big, heavy machines being on site, operating in heavy environments. But these conditions and the environment is changing, right? So we now see more flexibility on the shop floor. We see more um, flexibility when it comes to customer requirements, yeah? And all these innovation things, yeah, they require more digitalization, they require more computing power that doesn't only happen in the cloud, but on, also happens on site, in the factory, on the shop floor, right? And this is exactly where edge computing comes in. And let me maybe use an example here. I always compare edge computing a bit with harvesting in agriculture, right? One is uh, the harvester is on site, completely autonomous, right? Um, and basically does the job on site no matter what happens out on, in, in the outside world. And that's exactly what edge computing does. It makes sure that all the data we see on the shop floor is processed and handled on site uh, in, in the facility. And the second thing it is, it does filtering because the harvester brings up the wheat that then gets processed in the, in the rest of the process. And that's also what edge computing does because only the data that is really needed gets transferred to the cloud and gets then processed by the rest of the, let's say, value chain that we see. Well, Thomas brought up some great points and I know it's maybe a little cliche, but the possibilities are endless. I mean, if you take the fact that there's multiple data, there's these large amounts of data throughout a plant, there's these islands, I mean you could consider them islands. And being able to pull that together and make some decisions real time and, and get some action out of that is, is super powerful. Customers today are looking to reduce energy consumption. They're reducing scrap. They want to have more uptime. So in order to be able to do that, you have to be able to be flexible and pull this information in. Uh, it's just like, you know, you, you use harvesting. I, I'm going to use my kids. I'm a mother of four and they're all different. Just like you're trying to get them to do different things and they, you, know, you want them all to be successful. In order to do that, it's different for each of them. For our customers, it's the same. You have to be able to work together, pull everything into one location. I had a colleague and friend of mine that used to say, it's, uh, you, know, you have all this data, everybody has data. You're data rich, but knowledge poor. So the edge really helps us take that step on that journey to industry 4.0 and, and be able to take it maybe in some small steps. So if you're looking at the impact, the impact varies for everyone. Having the same application really is just not, not realistic. Every customer is going to have different challenges and there's going to be different ways to, to solve that. So using these edge components, whether it's the scalability, openness, being able to talk to third party devices, that's so important in being able to move quicker and being able to take on what everyone wants to do and all these goals that everyone has. So it's, it's going to be a big impact. It's going to even become more of an impact as you know, the uh, workforce retires and you're getting more and more people, not necessarily wanting to come into these glamorous industries of water, wastewater, and some of these other industries that we're so familiar with. We want to be able to give them the tools and the tool sets so that they can be effective. I think that's a very that's a very good point. Um, if I look at the two companies like uh, Emerson and Nokia, right? Emerson, that we have just spoken about that before, is a industrial giant, right? In many different sectors, not only manufacturing. We might know them from process industry, right? But they are active in many more segments, and that's similar to what Nokia does, right? Also looking into the innovation piece, right? Very innovative technologies, not only hardware and sensing technologies, uh, but also uh, the edge computing and also the software and analytics pieces. And I think that's a very good fit with what we as a Nokia bring to the market because we come with our private wireless solution, with our mission critical networking also across different segments. And uh, we just spoke about that we basically meet at the edge yeah, where those two solutions come together. And that's exactly why we said, okay, we need to uh, explore that partnership and we need to see how, let's say, the experience uh, and the knowledge from Emerson coming from the industry can go together with the networking technologies and with our experience uh, when it comes to connecting shop floors and, and digitalization uh, and, and digitalization of assets. And that's exactly um, how we play together. And I'm really, really curious about what we can do in the future. We just started, right? And I think there is a good potential to do more. Mm -hmm. Collaboration is, is just really important. It is re important in uh, business, manufacturing, and just in life. So in order to solve all these key issues and challenges that a customer has, 
you have to be able to work with third parties and other customers in order to solve your customers' problems. Not all of them are the same. Uh, everything's going to be slightly different. So being able to be open and secure and scalable, as well as being able to pull in this information from third party uh, devices and, and like you said, meet at that edge between OT and IT and get these insights to the customers is really important. And, and I also, you know, will state again is, you know, it's a big journey. It's not one that's going to happen overnight. So in order to do that, you know, you find someone that has those capabilities, has the industry knowledge and expertise, and then you start taking these steps. It, it's a journey. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's something that's going to take a little bit of time, but we're all here to help, and, and I think it's exciting. I mean, I've got to work with lots of customers doing different applications, and when you see that they're able to make some immediate changes and get some immediate benefit, that makes everything worth it. Yeah, when we talk about let's say innovation in that uh, in that sense and in the in the in the segment of manufacturing, um, I think it's a lot about uh, you know testing and trialing those new technologies, right? Starting small, growing big. I think that is what we see when we talk about such a transformation journey that Jill just mentioned, right? Um, and this is exactly how we approach also these partnerships, right? So looking into such an ecosystem of partners, we talk about devices, software, middleware, hardware, services, integration, project management, so many different topics, right? And this takes time to develop that and we usually use, uh, let's say, smaller projects to get started, to explore the technology, to explore the partnership, to work together, uh, and then to bring new innovation to life, yeah? And I mean, I think many parties can add different things to those innovation projects yeah we bring in of course a lot of experience when it comes to networking but partners bring in a lot of experience from the market or they bring in experience from technology they have used maybe for ages in a specific sub-segment of manufacturing and if we bring that together and we again land in this topic of IT and OT convergence then we do tests we do trials we leverage labs across the globe to bring a solution to life and then we find let's say a joint customer or a joint deployment that we can make happy with that new solution and with that uh, kind of joint maybe new product or a new thing that we invented together. Yeah, Tom has mentioned the innovation and working together to do testing. I mean, that brings experience, uh, you know, that trial and error piece that, you know, we all learned about, scientific method, you know, it, it's that trial and error to get to the outcome you want. But that is experience. So innovation's constantly moving, uh, experience is constantly growing, and that just helps build confidence with your customers and gives them a little bit of peace of mind. I mean, innovation's always something that is going to be a little bit of hesitant, right? There's always something new. Well, you have to take that step, and when you talk about the collaboration and being able to take that step, Emerson, you know, as we mentioned, you know, multiple industries, multiple products from the sensor you know, on up to you know, the analytics and the ITOT world. Being able to do that with other, other companies and with our customers is something that we want to do. You know, we're, we're all about you know, growing and becoming better, and this is one way for us to do it.